This is a 27 News Decision 2008 special presentation. The Kansas 2nd Congressional District runs north to Nebraska, east to Missouri, and south to Oklahoma, spanning 26 counties, including the cities of Manhattan, Leavenworth, Topeka, Parsons, Pittsburgh, and part of Lawrence. Current Representative Democrat Nancy Boyda stunned not only Kansas, but the nation with her victory in 2006 over incumbent Jim Ryan. Two Republicans wanted to represent their party in taking back the seat. A hard-fought primary saw State Treasurer Lynn Jenkins defeat former Congressman Jim Ryan on August 5th. I think we are hungry for a new direction. Now the candidates are set. One-term Congresswoman Nancy Boyda, Democrat. The party is unified, and I think that's what we need to do with our country. And State Treasurer Lynn Jenkins, Republican. If ever there was a time to send a CPA to Washington, I think that time is now. Both candidates have been campaigning hard for the November 4th vote, and now it's time for their final televised debate. 27 News, the Topeka Capital Journal and K-Man Radio present a live second district congressional debate between Nancy Boyda and Lynn Jenkins. Good evening, I'm Megan Farley. And I'm Bob Beatty. Thanks for joining us tonight for an hour-long debate between the Kansas second district congressional candidates. And joining us tonight is the Democratic incumbent Nancy Boyda and her challenger Lynn Jenkins. Thank you both for being here tonight. Questions for tonight's debate were largely taken from 27 News viewers and the readers of the Topeka Capital Journal. In addition, the candidates will have the opportunity to question each other. We will alternate who answers first throughout the debate. After responding to each question, the candidates will also be given time for short follow-ups. And we also want you, the viewer, to be part of tonight's debate. So if you have a question for both candidates, you can simply email it to debate at ksnt.com, and your question might be asked during the final segment of the hour. So I think it's time to get started. So the first question comes from Jennifer, and there are two parts to this question. It's a bit of a long one. We have it up here on the screen if you'd like to read along. $700 billion is a small percentage of the total market value of the stock market, which is valued at $10 trillion. And so some economists worry that the rescue plan will not be enough to turn the economy around. If it does not work, what would you suggest to the incoming administration, you know, should be done to get the economy moving again? Second. Do you think the overall level of regulation in the financial system needs to increase in response to the crisis? And we flipped the coin before the debate. Lynn Jenkins, you answer first. All right. Did you get all that? I okay. think I got the gist of it. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having us this evening. Um, I would not have supported the bailout that was before Congress several weeks ago. Um, I don't think it got to the root of the issue, which is the mortgage crisis, the defaults, and the foreclosures. Um, it, I think, rewarded folks that were irresponsible and uh, executives that were just flat greedy. And I would have liked to have seen Congress spend a little more time um, he hearing about the issue, debating the issue, and crafting a, a, a more realistic solution to that, that major issue of the day. Okay. And, and the regulation quickly, uh, the second part um, of the question? We certainly needed more oversight. Congress was asleep at the switch. We have been reading about this coming down the pike for years now. At least two years ago, I think, was the first time that I first read about it. So certainly, um, Congress should have been on the job, and they weren't. Okay. That's good. Well, again, thank you all for doing it to the Cap Journal, to K-Man, to uh, KSNT. All of you, thank you so much. Democracy requires an informed um, electorate, so this is very deeply appreciated. Uh, we spend nine days uh, in meeting after meeting with economists, with financial um, executives, with uh, experts of all kind. Um, what happened, and I think we all recognize that the President and his Treasury Secretary basically pulled a fire alarm uh, in the middle of a very crowded theater, and there was packed or panic that just uh, happened after that. I spoke to so many economists, I had a chance to speak to four of them personally, and I could not support the bill uh, because each one of them agreed that there were better ways to do this. Even the people who were backing to say you should vote for it uh, said there are better ways to do this, that we were given basically one option. And the president said, you can make some minor changes to this, but it's my way or the highway on it once again. Uh, so I could not vote for it. I did not think that it actually did 
it, I didn't think it had a, a good enough chance of actually working, and I think we've seen some of the problems with that. I would have said uh, it needed to recapitalize these banks, uh, taking a stock position in them, and that's what the president talked about today. Uh, that was something that I said, if we're going to spend $700 billion, we're crying out loud, let's get our money's worth out of it. Uh, I would have said that it, we need to go back and do something about the mortgage, uh, the underlying mortgages, and that did nothing to really affect the underlying mortgages, and so I couldn't have gotten behind that either. I'd love to talk sometime about John McCain's plan. I'm not talking about that we should have gone in with a, with a McCain type plan. Maybe you can mention regulation. On in regulation. Your, in your follow-up, yeah. in your follow-up, because Lynn Jenkins, do you have a follow-up? Um, no, I think I'm, I'm... Okay. I think I've covered that. I don't well, maybe think that 20 seconds on re the second sure. part of the question, I regulation. think on regulation that this has been getting out of hand for about, about 12 to 14 years now. Uh, and we could, have, we could have done something about it. As I've said, the referees were taken off the field years and years and years ago. When the, when the referees got taken off the field, uh, the American people were the ones who got run over. So we need to do that. Dennis Moore and I have been working on a bill that says our small community banks shouldn't get caught up. They didn't cause this mess, and they should not be caught up in the regulation that needs to happen from here on. Okay. Let's go to the, <clears throat> excuse me, the next question, and this question comes from Rex. He writes, given the size of the national debt, the money necessary to service the debt, the continued spending on Iraq and the Wall Street bailout, it's not enough, according to Rex, to say that you'll cut wasteful spending in order to bring the budget back into balance. What specific spending programs will you cut, and how much in spending cuts will be necessary? And Nancy Boyda, you have first crack at this question. Well, I think the first thing that we need to do, and I've, I've said this over and over again, um, the president said there were three things that were completely off limits that could not be touched. One was the massive subsidies that we were giving to the oil companies. Uh, you had to pay more taxes, and the oil companies got massive subsidies, even though they, they made $123 billion of profit last year. Uh, the insurance companies, health insurance companies, started getting new subsidies in 2003. CBO says it's $65 billion now over five years. So we're talking real money. The pharmaceutical industry still has yet to be reined in. So what do I think we ought to do? Before we start talking about cutting um, meals on wheels, before we start talking about cutting uh, Head Start, I certainly think we need to look at the massive amounts of low-hanging fruit that we can go in and we can make some substantial inroads to, uh, to balancing our budget. The fact that that's still, that those, those subsidies are still intact 100% today as they were when I started in Congress in 2007, I think is just a crime and something needs to be done on that. Long term, the American people are going to have to get used to the idea that we are going to have to make some cuts. These budget deficits have to be dealt with. Lynn Jenkins? Well, I, I think this is a, a perfect example where I can hit the ground running in Washington. As a CPA, I've spent my entire professional career doing this, taking businesses and individual finances, the state finances, from red to black. The, the problem at the federal level is not that they have too much of our tax money. In fact, they have more than enough of our federal tax dollars. They're just spending it improperly. They're wasting it. And, um, you know, our, our current congresswoman has been first at the trough for earmarks and the wasteful pork barrel spending project that is Washington, D.C. That's the easiest place to cut. Um, in addition to that, I think we need to look at failed federal programs, and there are mil many of them. Um, we need to look at the fraud and abuse that, are, that exist in current programs. Um, the Congressional Budget Office has identified programs that need to be um, reformed and cuts made. Um, there are overpayments made by the federal government. If you go online, you can search that. Um, in 2007, the billions of dollars in overpayments that the federal government made. Um, Again, if I am elected to Congress, this is going to be job one for me. We do not need to raise taxes. We need to address the spending side of the ledger. And if ever there was a time to send that CPA to Washington, I think we need to just look line by line by line and cut out this waste and inefficiency. Follow up? Are we going to have another question about earmarks, or is this our earmark No, discussion? this might be the good, good time to talk about <laughs> okay. earmarks. Well, I think, you know, I, I, I would love to see some specifics added on. I've been very specific on three things that will add literally tens and maybe hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, and there's more that I'll talk about very specific. I'd love to hear something specific from you other than just 
you know, we need to make some broad changes in Washington. Um, earmarks uh, come down to a decision. The budget is there. Are we going to let somebody in a fourth floor office building in Washington, D.C. make all the decisions? Somebody who's never stepped foot into Kansas. And that's what you're saying. We're going to let Washington make all those decisions. And this is a very clear difference. When, when the city of Iola comes to me and says, we've been trying to work with Washington to get a wastewater treatment plant, and we just have not been able to, and it's very, very, uh, very critical to our economy here, to our community, then unlike you, Lynn, I say, sure, I'll see what I can do to help. Now, here's what we were talking about. Got about 15, 15 okay. 20 seconds. 15 seconds. We need to make sure that we have transparency. When you have transparency, and they called me a maverick because I was the first one to put all of our earmark requests online. And yes, Lynn, I made many, many earmark requests knowing that only a few of those are going to be granted. Okay. Let's go to Lynn oh, Jenkins. Yeah, because there's a lot to cover. Sure. There's a huge difference here. Nancy wants to spend our federal tax dollars on things like a mule and packers museum, an aquarium, two million dollars on a um, Charles Wrangell Public Policy Institute with a private library, a, a private office. That is not why I spend or I pay federal income tax. Those kinds of things are things that can be best accomplished by local governments and state governments. What I'm suggesting is that when we send a dollar of our hard-earned money to Washington, by the time it cranks through that bureaucracy, there's only about 50% of it left. By the time all of the congressmen and women argue about who's going to get it, we just get pennies on the dollar back. How about we keep that dollar? here in our own state, in our own communities, and decide best how to use it. And transparency is great. Of course, Nancy is for making her earmarks transparent because she's trying to buy our votes. But she opposed <laughs> making everyone post their earmarks. She, she blocked that. And, um, you know, so what's, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Let's put them all out there because my vote's not for sale. I don't want free stuff. There's no such thing as a free lunch. You and I both know that. And so when she wants to come back and talk about the free stuff she's bought it, bought us, um, that is just Bob, insulting. I really think we need to have, I'd like some, yeah. well, there's been so many accusations let's, in it. Let's keep it, it takes let's about, keep it short though. Right. Uh, it takes about five seconds to make these yeah. accusations. Let's go about 30 seconds First, each. some Packer and Mule Museum. Jerry Moran, Todd T. Hart, um, Dennis Moore, and I all voted for whatever bill that you're talking about. So let's get real. Four members of Congress from Kansas all voted for that. All uh, wrong. No. Well, Pat Roberts, uh, we have Pat Roberts Hall here right in Kansas. So the same kind of thing happens right here in Kansas. Let's pay for it with our and own let money. And let me just say, well, I think we should. Let me just say that, um, uh, again, that I have been the one to, to call for transparency. I have, I don't know what you're, you're speaking of in terms of what I have ever said. I have said, suggested over and over again and brought forth um, legislation that says we need to, in fact, have everybody be transparent. Unfortunately, Dennis Moore and I were the only ones, after I did it, Dennis, Dennis put all of his earmark requests online. The funny thing is the people that are crying all of this about earmark reform, which happens to be on your team, on your side of the aisle, None of the Republicans from Kansas ever put them up. Even after they were asked many, many times, they said they'll do it afterwards. Well, then it's public. So I think we do have, I think the main thing that I'd like to leave people with well, is a lot of Well, let's let respond to that. Okay. And you might, you might be able to get another 10 seconds. Do you have a date on what time yeah. I'm supposed to well, let's vote let against that? let her respond to what you said. Absolutely. We'll get you that date and I time. I appreciate the, that. The charge petition that would have required transparency for all congressmen and women. I'm not running against Todd T. Hart or Dennis Moore or Pat Roberts. I'm running against Nancy Boyd and I'm saying you're flat wrong on this issue. I want to keep our money. I want all of our money. I don't want to spend my tax dollars. The good hardworking people of Kansas work too hard for their tax money to export it for ridiculous projects like a mule. These are straight up or down votes. Nancy Boyda, do you want to spend my money on a mule and Packers museum? And Nancy says yes. I will say no. And I would say again, all four members, it's, it's a procedural vote. All four okay. members vote on that. And I would just you offer one more thing. If Lynn Quicker. is doing this, we have the same budget. This, the budget will be the same, Lynn. If you have your way, Kansas will absolutely be the loser in this whole thing. And you can take your cloak of righteousness out on and say that you're trying to save taxpayer money. 
that same budget will still be there. The only problem is that Kansas dollars will not be coming back to K-State, to KU, to all the, to Iola, uh, to uh, so many of the, of, of the communities in our district that have come to me and said, we really need your help. Do you have a response or shall well, we move on? No, I, you know, this, the, the whole point is Nancy has had two years to go to Washington and do something about balancing the budget. And this year, year ended September 30, the budget deficit set the highest records known to man under her watch. We cannot continue to spend money we don't have. We are mortgaging our children's future. The national debt is over $10 trillion. I don't believe that my children should have to pay for the things that I am enjoying. And I'm just disappointed that we have not worked towards balancing that. Okay, and we'll have to leave it there to be okay. fair, Megan. We have okay. a, the next question. Let's move on here, shall we? Yeah. Well, a few of us were able to actually get out and hit the streets, ask the people out there a few of their questions. And our next question comes from Bob, not yeah. this Bob, a different Bob. And Lynn Jenkins will answer first. We actually have this on, uh, on video here for you. The, do either one of you anticipate a time when it would be wise to wait, wise to raise taxes, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, bring us back into financial control. All right, and that question again was, do either of you anticipate a time when it would be wise to raise taxes to bring us into financial control? And Lynn Jenkins, you have the uh, first answer to this one. Um, there are two sides to every ledger. The revenue side, which is the tax side. And I do not anticipate any time when it would be right, wise to raise taxes. Again, I feel very strongly that Washington has enough of our money. And I'm very disappointed that our current Congresswoman has voted for the largest tax increase that the nation has ever seen. She's supported budgets that dismantle the 0103 tax relief. And this is um, a tax package that affects every single person. Families with kids at home, married people, your family farmers, it involves the death tax. This is absolutely the wrong direction to go, especially given the current economic state. What was even more troubling was just a um, couple weeks ago, she was uh, one of only 30 in the United States House that supported um, or, or didn't support the alternative minimum tax fix, which as you all know, hits the middle class the hardest. Um, I know she thinks that we can tax our way into prosperity, and I could not disagree more. Nancy Boyda? I'd love to spend the rest of the time talking about taxes. Lynn, I don't care how many times you repeat it, you can say it over and over and over again. I have not voted for the largest tax increase in history, uh, and that has been debunked over and over and over again, just so you understand out there at home. What she's basically saying is the tax cuts that are going to be expiring in the future, it's basically like saying, I have failed to cook my, my family dinner for a week from Thursday. Now, for years, the Republicans had the chance to make these same permanent. And you're also saying that I, because I didn't sign a discharge petition, I was, a, you know, I mean, Lynn, your, your accusations are beyond, really, a pale. And I would just say, to those of you who are listening out here, You'll repeat them over and over and over again. The Lawrence Journal World, the Harris Newspapers, um, the tax cuts, you and I agree. So let's make sure that everybody knows what we agree on. That we're going to do everything we can to keep middle class taxes low. I think we agree on that. No, we don't. But you are the only one. You said you are the only one in this room and probably looking right out here into TV, uh, into, our, into our living rooms, I think you're the only one who says that the tax code is so perfect that you don't think we ought to close any loopholes. Hedge fund managers, 16 of them made $16 billion last year. Hundreds of them made tens of billions of dollars, of millions of dollars and hundreds of millions of dollars. They pay half the income tax rate that, that, that you pay out there, that you pay. If you're a fireman or a teacher, they pay half the rate. And yet, Lynn, you will stand here and say, we have to balance the budget but we are not going to close any of these loopholes. You are the only person that may be in Topeka, Kansas, who thinks that offshore corporations, okay, it's hundreds of billions of dollars. And then I need, I need to talk about AMT. You'll get a follow-up. Go ahead. Okay. I want to clarify, we do not agree on this issue at all because Nancy says something here at home and then does exactly 
the opposite in Washington, D.C. And I think anybody that knows Lynn Jenkins knows that I will do what I tell you I will do. And she is entitled to her own opinions, but she is not entitled to her own facts. And the United States Treasury and the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office says this is the largest tax increase the nation will ever see. Again, we have not yet, as the Republicans did, have not yet moved to make those permanent. You have my word that I will do everything I can to make those middle class tax, uh, uh, in, or tax cuts permanent. Uh, so thank you very much on that. On the AMT, okay. what I, we have to, that just, you I cannot go on. 10 seconds. It. Okay, with the AMT, I absolutely voted to fix that AMT. Lynn, the difference is, I, did, I said we need to pay for it. Okay. You said that we put it straight to the budget, and I think we need to say, would you, right. have, would you have voted for the AMT when it was fixed, when the, when the amount of money would not it have gone to the budget? It should be eliminated. Well, of course it should. Do you think okay. we should pay for well, it? Do you think wait. it should just let's be added to the budget and, Let's deficit. wait for that later. Uh, we now have a question yes. from Christine. Okay, we do have one more question, and then we're going to be going to break. Maybe we'll just have one-minute answers. Yes. I don't think we we'll need follow-ups to this one. Quickly. This one. Okay. It's a little more lighthearted, lighthearted before the break. Let's try this one out. The question... From Christina Gez, besides yourself, ladies, what living Kansan do you see as best exemplifying Kansas values the most, and why is that? And Nancy Boyd. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I get to go first. Yeah. Actually, this I'm not good with you. these kinds of questions very much, um, but I would just say Nancy Landon Kassebaum. You know, when uh, I voted for her several times, um, she was the uh, the epitome of bipartisanship. She was the epitome of graciousness. And she, she did not come out there and try to just malign somebody's character or distort their record, um, as I believe that you're doing, Lynn. Uh, so I think that Nancy Landon Kassebaum, we, we could use a few more Nancys in, in Congress. Nancy Landon Kassebaum, I mean. Okay. Lynn Jenkins? Um, I would have to say my mom and dad. Um, you know, there's a whole lot more to Lynn Jenkins than the elected official. And there are n no two people on the face of the earth that I have more respect and admiration for their hard work, their dedication to their faith and their family and their community. Um, they have been the perfect role models for me. Okay, very good. There you have it. And now we are going to take a quick break, but remember again, you can still send questions to the candidates through the, throughout the entire debate and you can email them to question, you can email your question to debate at ksnt.com. Coming up, the candidates will have an opportunity to opportunity to ask each other a question, so stick around. Introducing the Saturn Astra with an EPA estimated 32 miles per gallon highway and the Saturn Aura with an EPA estimated 30 miles per gallon highway. Two remarkably fuel efficient cars from the company that's rethinking everything. Now choose between 0% APR for qualified buyers or 3,000 total purchase allowance on the 2008 Saturn Aura V6 with an EPA estimated 29 miles per gallon highway. We're coming to your track. The Advanced Auto Parts World of Outlaws. Presented by Kansas Army National Guard. Invade Heartland Park Topeka on the second annual Thunder in the Heartland. Don't miss the greatest show on dirt. See Outlaws, Donnie Schott, Joey Saldana, Craig Delancey, and the King, Steve Kinzer. Get your tickets by phone or at HPT.com. The World of Outlaws. Heartland Park Topeka for the second annual Thunder in the Heartland Shootout. Don't miss the greatest show on dirt. Turn it on, turn it on, turn it on with Blue Dot. When plumbing problems have you down the drain, call the professionals at Blue Dot. At Blue Dot, we treat your home as if it were our own. Our trust-certified drain cleaning technicians are background checked and drug tested for your safety. From drain cleaning to total line replacements, Blue Dot is your plumbing expert. For quick response time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, call Blue Dot. Turn it on, turn it on, turn it on with Blue Dot. In today's topsy-turvy real estate world, there are more home choices than ever. There are also more possible mistakes than ever. Your time is valuable, and you need a real estate agency you can count on. Trusted since 1954 and with locations throughout Northeast Kansas, Century 21 Miller and Midyet has more agents, more listings, and more help for you than any other realtor. Call Century 21 Miller and Midyet at 866-272-2260 when buying or selling your next home. Leaf. 
Welcome back. In this segment, the candidates will get to ask each other a question. And we are going to start with Nancy Boyda. Let's get right to it. Your question now for Lynn Jenkins. Well, Lynn, you've been telling us that you're chomping at the bit um, to go to Washington because you're a CPA. And yet, I'm going to try to ask you one more time what you're talking about and cutting wasteful spending like earmarks. Um, and I guarantee you people in Chicago think sorghum research, sorghum genetic research in Kansas must be a waste of money. Uh, I don't think K-State would agree with that. But, Len, I would just say again, you're talking about less than a small part of the budget, less than 1% of the budget. And I'm going to ask you, if you possibly can, to talk about how you're going to specifically, what are you going to cut, what are you going to do to try to balance the budget? This is very, very... Uh, very important to my family, to everyone's family out here. What are you going to do to balance the budget? Um, well, I'm actually going to do something about it, unlike um, you all have done in Congress, which has, you've done nothing but make the problem worse. And um, I'm glad you asked. I've got some notes here regarding a plan that I've been working on. Um, I'm up to $300 billion that we can cut right off the bat and would be happy to get you the details Can that you, it involves federal earmarks. It involves overpayments made by the government. Just in 07 is the figure that I've used. Um, fraud Any and abuse. Um, I'd, be, I'd be delighted to get you additional, um, but this is the general overview of the plan. I didn't bring the whole thing with me tonight. Um, and then there are spending cuts proposed by the Congressional Budget Office that I've reviewed and federal programs that failed to meet um, their outcomes and the populations, you know, that those folks serve. So I think we're on it. This is just the first step. I haven't been elected yet, um, but this is my, this is what I do. And I'm anxious to get to, to Washington, roll up my sleeves, park the partisan politics at the door if necessary, and get after it. May I respond to that? You each get 30 seconds then okay. uh, to respond to that question. What I would say is as, states, as state treasurer, um, this is your letter to Kathleen Sebelius in April of this year. I just got this last week. Mm -hmm. And I've heard you say that you're going to go line by line by the federal, uh, through the federal budget. And this is basically saying that you have y your letter to Kathleen Sebelius, Governor Sebelius, um, saying, in fact, that you, have, they, you found that we are mismanaging, the state has mismanaged $15 million. And that what I'm concerned about is there's quite a few uh, counties, in fact, that have been shortchanged in this formula, and you just found it after in your sixth year of um, of being in a okay. treasurer. And I'm, if, as a CPA, then Lynn. tell us what's been going that? on yeah. with. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. So I brought some notes because this is actually something that I'm most happy to visit about. What she's talking about is a press release that we um, sent out April 18th, and of it was course, a letter. Yeah, uh, well, it was a press release. We alerted the governor. We alerted the House leadership and the Senate leadership. Um, and, of course, none of the press found it worthy to report on. Um, and so I'm glad you brought it up today. Um, but thanks to the good work of the folks in my office, we found an error that had occurred back in 1999, years before I ever was elected state treasurer. Um, it had never been caught despite the fact that we had had annual audits conducted by outside auditing firms. It was within their scope of work, and they simply missed the programming error. And so what's even more remarkable is that my staff would find that when something an auditor didn't find after nearly a decade was able to locate it. We um, found that error. In addition to that, we hired an outside accounting firm, an independent firm, and they not only resolved our problem, but they found errors over in Department of Revenue under the governor's control. And we have um, everything wrapped okay. up. And I am so proud of the good work that my folks did. And I just find it interesting well, that Nancy I think wants to talk about things like this after rather six than years the real as, as being in the state treasurer. I, have you contacted the uh, the county commissioners to let them know that hopefully I get I hear so much about all right you can, you can bring that up in another question we have to shift gears and Thank go you. to Lynn Jenkins who's going to question Nancy Boyd okay in 2006 Nancy you said and this is a quote Congress should never waste a single taxpayer dime on wasteful spending and I agree with that 
You also ran a TV ad where you promised not to do any annoying robocalls. So I was curious if you could explain to Kansas taxpayers why you have voted to fund a series of wasteful projects like the Mule and Packers Museum and the Perfect Christmas Tree Project, and while you personally used our tax dollars to pay for more than 40 sets of annoying robocalls promoting yourself during your first term of office. Well, let me just say that um, I think for the good news is those annoying robocalls in the, in the campaign, I think, have stopped. There was so much misrepresentation just about a month ago, and people were so outraged. They hated the campaign robocalls that were so misrepresentative. We've held 58 Congress on Your Corner events. I got to go out and meet with people uh, up and down the district. My favorite was um, at uh, Bonnie's Cafe in Gas, Kansas, where they all wear red t-shirts that say, don't just pass gas, stop in for coffee. We had one at um, Buffalo, Kansas, population I think 358, and um, I think there were 48 people there. The cheapest way that we can communicate to let people know they were very, very hungry. You all were very hungry to have your congresswoman show up to hear what was going on in your lives. And we held 58 Congress on your corners. We had, uh, I participated in over 400 public events. And yes, uh, I, I need to let people know that was by far one of the most cost effective ways to just say, this is Nancy Boyd and I'm gonna be in your neighborhood. Um, Lynn, I, you know, I, for somebody who has, um, has taken a lot of criticism for the, uh, the, the, uh, the ads that you were which had your face up on TV, um, I think that's kind of a, it's, it's a, it's a pretty funny charge. I will, in fact, be doing everything I can to be out in the community as often as I can, uh, hearing from my constituents. And I don't apologize for doing that in the cheapest, most cost-effective manner. Lynn Jenkins, I assume you have a follow-up? or. Well, I, I didn't hear the answer to either one of my questions, why you wasted our money on a Mule and Packers Museum and a Christmas tree project, and why you said you weren't going to do annoying robocalls, and then you did. Well, I think I did. Um, I, I think I've been very clear. The robocalls, in fact, um, are, are an, uh, my uh, attempt to make sure that as many people across the district know how they can get a hold of their representative. Uh, if anybody didn't think that's a clear answer, please contact me and we'll, and I'll let you know as soon as possible um, anything that I can clear up on that. I think it's a very clear answer, Lynn. Um, I think we've talked about earmarks. Um, in fact, um, you know, as I say, all four members of Congress uh, from Kansas, including the senators, have voted across the board on those uh, earmarks. And okay. I think people want to know substantially, Lynn, we have real problems in this we country, We have to get people. to the next question. How next are we question. going to deal with them in a serious, in a very serious and thoughtful manner? I think we need to get on with okay. it. And we, we wanted to a bit here, we got a lot of questions from people, some more lighthearted, some more serious, a lot of issues. So as we did, we wanted to throw in some more, you know, lighted heart, lighthearted <laughs> questions because we want to see all of you as, as candidates. So our next question is from Craig. And Craig, this is a simple one. Craig wants to know flat out what makes you guys angry. Okay, not necessarily in a political sense, but in a more personal sense. He wants to know what really makes you guys angry mad. Lynn Jenkins. Well, That's, you know, I think I've indicated yeah. what makes me mad tonight and that is when Nancy says one thing at home and does the opposite in Washington DC. That truly does make me angry. Just give it to me straight up and you know we can have all of the facts and know what we're dealing with. What about non-politically? <laughs> Something nothing to do with politics makes you mad. I think that's what Craig might have been getting at. Yeah, we want to see something, you know, let's yeah. what makes see you a different party. Uh, when does Lynn Jenkins well, get angry? Well, you know, that same thing applies when I get angry is not only when Nancy Boyda doesn't do what she says she's going to do, but when my kids don't do it, you know, when I send them upstairs to clean their room and I go up in a half an hour and they're watching, you know, something on the computer. Kid, yeah. Kids don't clean their rooms? Yeah, kids I know. are on the computers? This I know, is shocking. it is. Nancy Boyda, what makes you mad? Well, um, by the grace of God, all my kids are out of the house, um, so I, I don't have that particular frustration. But with Steve and I have seven kids, so we've certainly been there uh, and, and done that. Um, I would, you know, one of the things that um, got me 
into politics and up and, and going, and this is a, a political thing. I hope it's in, uh, we'll try it, Craig, and see if it works for you. Um, the budget deficit is something that just worries me about what we're doing and how we're leaving our children this massive, massive debt to pay for. Uh, there were two really hot button issues that got me into politics. One was uh, the invasion of Iraq and the other was our budget deficit. How about non-politically? Lynn Jenkins answered it, so we have I to I think push with you. My, my... What makes Nancy Boyd a man? Uh, when I can't get the, um, the, uh, the, the lawnmower started. <laughs> And then you actually and, and then by you getting pull, mad, you, you know, should then, start. You, then know, you, you pull, pull your, your arm yeah. out, and then it hurts. You know, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, because you guys aren't always thinking politics. No. you know. No. So and I still mow the lawn. Yeah. I, we still, right. I still mow the lawn from time. Steve usually does, but I mow the lawn <laughs> myself Every once sometimes. In a while. Okay. Very good. Megan, shall we move on? Yes. Okay. We've received several emails on this subject, and just like, like we did in the primary debate, so we will ask this question again. Do you support overturning the Roe versus Wade Supreme Court decision, allowing women to have an abortion? And if overturned, when in Congress, would you vote for a federal law banning all, abo all abortions? And Nancy, um, you get to answer first. Well, on, on the issue of abortion, I probably make everyone mad. Um, I am not endorsed by any of the uh, Democratic um, or, or any of the women's um, organizations that care about abortion so I do not believe on abortion on demand uh, and will do everything I can to reduce the number of abortions so I don't get any of the support from the pro-choice groups and sometimes they're mad at me again Steve and I have seven kids between us do I think we ought to notify parents absolutely um, absolutely do I think we ought to take girls across state line? No, I don't think we should uh, to avoid that. So I know Lynn is endorsed by the, um, the Republican pro-choice group, Wish List, uh, and, and I, I don't know whether they've been helpful with you or not to raise money, but I've been out there independent, and the nice thing with that is then nobody tries to tell me how to vote. Uh, I vote the way that I think is best, and no, I would not be in favor of overturning Roe v. Wade. Um, when it comes to abortion, I have a record from my years in the State House. Um, I uh, voted to ban partial birth abortion. I voted to require parental consent, but I maintain three exceptions, rape, incest, and life of the mother. Okay. Do you support overturning Roe versus Wade? Um, you know, that's a constitutional issue, and I'm, you know, I don't think the lawmakers are going to weigh in on that. Okay. All right. All right. Let's move that on is? to the break. Okay, I think, that works. Well, we're going to take another quick break here, but again, you can still send questions to the candidates uh, throughout the entire debate. You can just email your question to debate at ksc.com. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I'm Ryan Poulter, owner of Arrow Exteriors. Do your drafty windows make your family feel uncomfortable and waste your energy dollars? Let Arrow Exteriors update your home with energy efficient windows and insulated vinyl siding to save you money. Let Arrow Exteriors help make your house an energy efficient home. Your table awaits at the Blind Tiger Brewery and Restaurant. Come to the Blind Tiger, Topeka's award winning brewery, and choose from a dozen handcrafted beers. Beer brew for every mood. There's something for everyone at the Blind Tiger, a delicious original. Bring the family, enjoy steak, pasta, seafood, killer barbecue, and mouthwatering sandwiches. With great food and a variety of choices for the kids, you can relax at Topeka's favorite destination. If you get spoiled by the taste, blame us. Blind Tiger Brewery and Restaurant, 37th in Kansas. Who sells more homes than any other real estate agent in Topeka? It may not be who you think. It's Vivian Kane. Why? Because she's everywhere. She is everywhere. Vivian Kane is everywhere. That's one reason why Vivian Kane sells more homes than any other realtor in Topeka. Think Vivian Kane with Capital City Real Estate. This message. Welcome back. In a moment, we will ask the candidates questions that have been emailed to us during the debate. But first, we have a question from Matt. All right, and here's the question from Matt. Most states are starting to require that small businesses provide their employees with some type of health care. Would you be in favor of some type of government subsidized HMO or health care system that's available to small businesses that might not be able to necessarily afford health care to their employees? All right. Lynn Jenkins first. All righty then. Matt, thank you for that question. Um, what I'm 
certainly not in favor of is a government-run health care system, as many Democrats and Barack Obama favor. I think we've seen where that's been a disaster in countries like Canada and England, where you see delivery systems that aren't working, long waiting lines, and um, so how I would like to approach the issue of health care is to provide first more portability provide tax incentives where people can buy their own health care. Um, because when you lose a job, you're concerned not only about losing the job, but losing your health care as well. So if folks can buy their own health care, they can take it from job to job, state to state. In addition to that, I think we must make health care more transparent. You know, it's amazing you can go online and find the cheapest hotel in Topeka tonight, but you can't go online and find the most affordable health care. And finally, I am a supporter of the health savings accounts where personal responsibility is made a, a factor in health care delivery. I think health care is probably the, the biggest um, issue that our, our country faces, and we have to address the cost of health care. That's where it has to start. There are several things that we can do. The big drug companies have absolutely have free reign, uh, and nothing has been done. The president said, uh, we're not going to do, we're not going to let you do anything to rein in um, how big pharma, the big pharmaceutical companies, actually charge taxpayers uh, for these drugs. Uh, unfortunately, that went straight down party lines. I don't think, Lynn, you've ever really taken a position on what you think about if we should rein in the big pharmaceutical companies in the way that they charge. We absolutely have to do something about um, the new subsidies that are being given to the health insurance industry. We can attack the cost of health care right then and there. As I agree with you, we have to have transparency. We need electronic medical records. We absolutely need to look at the outcomes to make sure that we're getting not only the best dollar value, but people are getting the best health care out there. Those are the short-term answers, and we have to start doing that right now. Again, I'd be very interested in hearing uh, if Lynn thinks that we ought to allow the pharmaceutical company or Medicare to uh, negotiate on behalf of Medicare recipients like the VA does, I think that's a very important thing that will save our country and our seniors uh, just literally tens and maybe hundreds of billions of dollars. We've got to make big, uh, big steps into getting this problem fixed. Follow up on Jenkins? Um, well, we have to address Medicare, and um, I, I know for certain the direction that Nancy Boyda has taken us is the wrong direction. Um, her vote would have cut Medicare by nearly $200 billion. That's the wrong way to go. And, you know, one of us up here has had the opportunity the last two years to address the issue and do something about it and done nothing. I don't, again, I have no idea where the $200 billion comes from, Lynn. We'll I just get don't, it for you. I don't even have any idea. Let me also say that when, I just would like to say something about taxes. You keep saying that you're going to keep your word, and we just saw an advertisement. In 2002, you said during your whole campaign, you promised that you weren't going to raise taxes. In April of 2002, you even made a statement to the Capital Journal that said, I'm not going to vote for any tax increase. Three weeks later, you voted for $294 million, Lynn. I know you want people to say that I'm raising taxes. I will make the tax cuts permanent for the middle class when it's time. Okay, when the it's question time, is buried into taxes. Do you want to respond to that? Well, That's sure. Yeah, but, but I mean, th that was for well, well, property well, let, tax, sales her, tax, death, let, everything that she was just talking about, let, all of that, you Jenkins raised taxes respond. on. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nancy, you voted more than a dozen times to raise taxes, and you and I both know it. And um, there is a huge difference between the federal government and the state government. The state government balances their budget. Not only do we balance our budget, but we do it on the backs of, uh, or we do it in spite of all of the unfunded mandates that come down from the federal government. And I am, I'm, I'm just real proud to be a part of state government and the responsible fiscal policies that we have. Um, and I think everyone can agree that they are worse off now than they were two years ago when you were sworn into office. And at the end of the day, that needs to be um, the measuring stick that folks use when they go to the ballot box. I have not voted for tax increases. I have well, not voted for tax increases. Thank you very, very much. Lynn, you said you were not going to vote for tax increases. Okay and then voted for 294. That's proven, that was record. 
that's something that we all saw. I have you know, signed I, again, a pledge against I raising taxes. But I don't please know what don't make, to Please don't make Can accusations. Well, no, no, I'm asking you. Please don't make accusations against me. I but think you've people raised want them. to hear. No, I have not. And been. I've signed a pledge not to. Well, I have not. And that's a huge difference. You get to make the decision, people. Right. One wants that to raise, true. one doesn't. Let's, uh, Megan has an emailed question <laughs> okay. that just came in a few minutes yes, ago. Yes, now we're taking, this is when we, uh, actually, yeah, this came in during the debate. So Mark wants to know, uh, would either of you agree that the illegal immigrants in this country are putting a strain on our social services, welfare, hospitals, etc., and that they have broken the law and should be sent back and deported and apply for citizenship, or how would you like to see the problem handled? Nancy Voida? Well, I do think that uh, Ill illegal immigration is putting a huge strain on, on our jobs, on downward pressure on wages, on our social services, and that's why I have taken a very strong position to say we need common sense legislation that starts first and foremost with putting together a system that employers can use to verify who was here legally. I think where Lynn and I change, or, or differ on this is Lynn has said over and over and over again that we shouldn't hold employers accountable for hiring illegal immigrants uh, until later, until we have everything put together. That's something that we fundamentally disagree on. Um, and I, I, I would just like to hear, um, I, we, we, we've heard you say it so many times, I'd like to hear what you have to say and, uh, sure. tonight, please. All righty, thanks. Um, when it comes to illegal immigration, I've been the first to um, criticize the Republicans for allowing the situation to get where it was, um, and criticize the Democrat leadership, uh, along with Nancy, for having two years and done absolutely nothing about it. So my proposal would be to stop the hemorrhaging immediately by securing the border, complete the fence. We've got to stop the hemorrhaging. Um, and then once that is accomplished, we do need to give businesses the tools to be the second line of defense because these folks aren't coming here because we're charming. They're coming here for work. And if we can have a database available to the businessmen and women of our nation where when an when a employee comes in to apply for a job, you can sit them down at a computer, enter their social security number and their um, name, and hit a button and know instantly whether their birth date matches to know whether they're in the system and they're healed here legally or not. And, and um, you know, so that would be my approach to resolving this issue. But let's, I think let's we both keep it agree, to about we both agree 30 seconds because we've process. got hundreds of I questions. I think the difference is, again, that I think that we need to hold employers accountable while we're putting that. And I think we both agree on securing the border. We both agree that we need to put together a system that can be worked. Right now, I, I don't think you can just turn your backs on what's going on, though. Follow up or move on? I think um, everyone knows where I stand. Okay. I oppose the amnesty, and um, we need to actually stop giving lip service to this issue and do something. Okay. Uh, several, hundreds of emails, but no, uh, let me read one. We are over-dependent on foreign oil and energy sources. This is from James, but uh, Lee also wrote something similar. What do you propose to support in Congress or even advocate for to make us not be at the mercy of outside energy influences? And who do we start with, Megan? Uh, uh, Lynn Jenkins. Lynn Jenkins. All righty. Um, well, he's right. We need to stop being reliant on foreign sources of oil. And so my solution has been one that is an all of the above solution. We need to drill, we need to drill now. We have resources offshore, we have them in the Gulf, in Anwar. Um, that needs to be the first step, but that's not enough. In addition to that, we need to um, look at alternative renewable resources. And here in Kansas, we have many, wind, solar, nuclear, um, clean coal, and then we also need to give automobile manufacturers incentives to produce fuel-efficient vehicles, and, and conservation is a part of it. But again, the big difference between myself and Nancy Boyd is she tells us that that's what she's for when she's back here in the state of Kansas. Does a newspaper in, in, insert, does TV advertisement, and then she went back after a five-week vacation and voted against her own bill to do this, a bill that she co-sponsored. Just another example of saying one thing here, thinking we're not bright enough to see that she's not voting that way in Congress. She instead supported um, not the bipartisan bill that she was sponsoring, but one that was drafted, you know, in the dark of night in a private office by Nancy Pelosi, um, allowed drilling 50 miles offshore where there is no oil. Um, hmm. Nancy Boyda? Actually, I was very proud to work with a bipartisan group um, in the Cannon Office building, and we worked at night. 
uh, it wasn't in the dark of night, but um, a group of us got together and said, what can we do to help forge a compromise? Uh, clearly, that was part of a process, Lynn, and I was very honored to be part of that group and to start moving that discussion forward. Uh, again, I think we agree that we need more domestic drilling, and I have voted for that. Uh, we need to have more renewable fuels that will help Kansas just absolutely bloom and help our economy right here. And clearly the low-hanging fruit is conservation, what you and I can do to make sure that we're using our resources so carefully. Everybody goes, well, if you would agree, then why can't we get that done? And the rub in Congress, we voted five times, five times on comprehensive energy bills. And they never, they, they would pass the House, but then never get picked up in the Senate because there wasn't a large enough majority. Even right here in Kansas, it went straight down party lines because we said if we're going to make all these investments into renewables and into all these great things that are going to be good for Kansas, we need to pay for it, Lynn. We can't just keep on spending this money and sending the bill to our children. And so we paid for it every time by cutting, not just reducing, not eliminating, but by cutting the subsidies to the big oil companies who made $123 billion last year. And we, we took some of that and we said that's how we're going to pay. And in yeah. fact, each time, each time, the Republicans stayed right with the president and said we're not going to do that. Lynn, you said that you don't believe that we should cut a dime of subsidies to the oil companies. Again, that's where we okay, disagree. We have to let uh, Lynn Jenkins short follow, but Robert emailed in, and to add to your follow-up, uh, you may have mentioned, but I missed it, will you also support additional uh, nuclear plants uh, in your follow-up so you can address it? Yes. That? That was easy, but back to okay. the, um, the follow-up. Yes. Okay, we answered um, that. That was Robert's easy. Robert's got that one. Um, you know, it, it, it's just amazing the time that Nancy decides to be fiscally responsible. You know, didn't vote for a budget, the balanced. And when you do that, all sorts of nasty things happen. One of many is it raids the Social Security Fund where we've got a system that's already in dire straits. Um, I don't know what she is suggesting by raising taxes on oil companies. Do you not think that they're going to just pass that on to the consumer? That's what they do. They're in this to make a buck. So, um, you know, what I really just don't understand is why you would say you'd support those things and then you'd vote against it. At the end of the day, that's what's most concerning to me. 30 seconds. Well, let me just say again that um, I think balancing the budget is very, very important. And I think you may be one of the very few people in the second district who think that, uh, that subsidizing them to the tune of tens of billions of dollars when they made $123 billion last year. And we saw gas go to $4.10 a gallon. Lynn, it's just disingenuous. Um, they're paying virtually no royalties on federal lands. These are your tax dollars. And you're paying more tax so that the oil companies can get off scot-free. All right, It's a huge 30. difference between the two of us. Okay, right. well, Megan has another we, we've question. We've got one that kind of follows up on the issue of Social Security. And this uh, question is from Erica. It is, the Social Security system seems headed for trouble unless either benefits are cut, the retirement age is raised, or some other reform is made to the system. What do you support in terms of Social Security reform? Nancy Boyd, you get to answer first. Let me just say, in general, Social Security is pretty fundamentally sound. It's going to need some change around the edges to, uh, to, to make it last for a long time. But ultimately, this goes right back to the deficit issue. Uh, and so when we talked about the AMT, and Lynn, you said, um, you know, I voted against the AMT. I voted for the AMT. You need to tell people. I voted to fix the AMT mm -hmm. so that it didn't hit the middle class. But when it said we're not going to pay for it and we're going to send that straight to your children and mine, that's when I said no. So we have to start doing, being aggressive about taking care of this budget. And what I'm doing is paying for the AMT, for, our, uh, for the S chip, for children's health care. We have paid uh, every bill that we have brought forth on S chip, on uh, energy. They've been paid for, people. These are important investments that we need to make in our families and in our communities, uh, in energy. But, Lynn, we have to do something about this budget. And, yes, we have a war that there hasn't been a penny paid for, not a penny paid for. And I, I would hope that you're not going to try to blame me. It sounds like you're blaming me for that I haven't gotten the budget 
uh, balanced in 18 months, Lynn, I am being as as aggressive as I possibly can to do that in every chance that we can. But every okay. chance that you you have said, no, you won't do that. All right. Lynn Jenkins? Um, I'm sorry if you've not heard me say my A number one priority is make tax relief permanent and cut wasteful spending so that we balance the budget, unlike your track record, which is to produce the highest budget deficit ever, $450 we billion dollars war, this we year. We are at war. And um, when it comes to Social Security, you made the situation even worse. I believe Social Security needs to be protected. We need to keep it solvent. We cannot break promises to people who are already in the system. Um, and the worst thing we can do for Social Security is to do what Nancy Boyda has done, and that's to vote for budgets that do not balance, because when we do that, it raids the Social Security Trust Fund. That's going the wrong direction. And here's what we have. We have 30 seconds for this, and then we go to the last question. So you have 30 seconds, I'm going to hold you to it. And I'm good. So let me just it. say again that for seniors, yeah. um, Lynn, you've been out telling people, because we have a war that hasn't been paid for, that Nancy Boyd is going to somewhere or another raid the Social Security. That is so far from the truth. That's why I have said you, you want to all of the new investments and everything, but none of this. You have offered a way to pay for any of it, Lynn. And that's why I've been, again, so, uh, so careful to say if we're going to invest in these new things, then we need to pay for it so that we can be responsible when it comes to your Social Security, when it comes to our children's budget deficits. And that's why... Uh, I have right. been very big on That's the pay as you go. Thank Lynn you. Lynn Jenkins? Well, again, we've got a congresswoman here that votes with a liberal from San Francisco. 93% of the time, they've produced a budget deficit larger than any in our history. And now she wants to come home and talk to us about being fiscally responsible. It doesn't add up. Um, this is what I do. This is what I've spent my entire career doing. I think I have something to offer, and I'm asking the folks in the second district to give me a chance to, to go to and work. We, and we that. have a final question yes. that's perfect for yeah. almost a closing statement. Exactly. Megan's going to so, uh, keep it a, keep about, it a keep, about a minute. About a minute, yeah. All right, if an undecided voter is entering the voting booth on November 4th, still can't decide who to vote for, what is the main thing that you would want the voter to think about when they see your name on the ballot? And I have lost track. Jenkins. Lynn Jenkins. I'll be happy to go first. Right. Jenkins, um, join us. Well, I think the economy is the A number one issue on everyone's mind this cycle. And I would submit to folks, do you want to send a CPA to Washington or a drug saleswoman? I think I have a track record of doing this very thing. I won't raise taxes in an environment that is toxic. If we would do that, the economy would shrink. I intend to find every dollar that's being wasted, eliminate the, the pork barrel spending, address the energy issue once and for all. I'm not going to be voting for these ridiculous San Francisco plans. I want an all of the above bipartisan plan. Stop raiding the Social Security fund. So it's the economy. And I, you know, I, I really am proud of the record that I've had in the state of Kansas, and I want to go to work for Thanks, folks. Thanks. We have 50 seconds, right. so we I have, have to go. I have absolutely done everything I can to balance our budgets, to go out there, and to invest in our country when it comes to education, when it comes to health care, when it comes to energy. Uh, I am not, you know, Lynn, you have been constantly trying to distort my record. I have never been in pharmaceutical sales. I've been in pharmaceutical research and development. My background is chemistry for my entire life. They put me on the cover of the National Journal. This is the oldest government and political magazine or journal in our country because I'm in the center of the center. Um, you can say whatever you'd like. I've worked hard for Kansans, and I would love to go back and, and keep on fighting the battle. I will not distort your record, Lynn. I will do everything I can to make it very clear the differences between the two of us, um, and I would love to go back and work for you. All right. Very good. All right, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for you. having thank us. You. And thank you for joining us. 27 News will be re-airing this entire debate Saturday, October 18th from uh, 12 to 1 p.m. And don't forget, the deadline to register to vote is October 20th. And, of course, the general election itself is on November 4th. Yep. So until then, continue to watch 27 News for complete coverage of the 2008 election. Have a great night.
This is a 27 News Decision 2008 special.